very good morning to you all. Some people register a sense of place through sweet memories of taste and sound, others through scent and smell, and still others through images in their mind's eye. To me, the world is made up of stories, stories full of sound and fury. Great stories are strangers at home, for they defamiliarize the banal experience and daily utterances while giving us something recognizable through a new language and form. When William Shakespeare's plays move through different cultures, they tell surprising stories of globalization. Take, for example, a slice from Hamlet's inquisitive mind, to be or not to be, that is the question. Well, the real question is, why is there no subject and why is there no, no object here? Um, this peculiar phrase is so familiar to people. The versatile verb to be is as ambiguous as in English as it is in many other languages. It has been translated, as you can see here, into Russian, Arabic, and German as to do, to die, and to have. But to have what? That's never specified. To translate to be or not to be into Japanese will require substantial rewriting because the language does not have to be without semantic context. Working with Japanese, a language more complex than English from a sociolinguistic point of view, a translator would have to wrestle with more than 20 first and second person pronouns just to maintain the ambiguities. And those pronouns, some of them are quite gendered and there's different social register. Um, so we're right at the topic of literary ambiguity. Ambiguity, in fact, is, an, is a welcome gift to the uninhibited mind. Ambiguity, literary ambiguity, connects minds for global change. For it has been an ally of oppressed peoples in the Soviet Union, South Africa, Tibet, and elsewhere. Ambiguity allows people to express themselves under censorship in difficult situations. And especially when history is held hostage by politics, when human rights are being violated, storytelling helps restore dignity to what it means to be human. Storytelling makes us human. Hamlet, in a foreign language I've you just witnessed, compels us to ask questions about what we assume to be familiar in our own culture. To be whom? To do what? So this question was very much on the mind of Nelson Mandela when in the Robben Island jail off the coast of Cape Town, Mandela found inspiration from a smuggled copy of the complete works of William Shakespeare. The South African political prisoners, they took turns to sign their names next to passages that were meaningful to them. In 1977, Mandela signed his name next to a passage on courage from Julius Caesar. The book has come to be affectionately known as the Robben Island Bible. To disguise it, an atheist prisoner pasted Hindu festival Diwali greeting cards, as you can see here, all over the cover, and told the guard that it was his Bible. In fact, yesterday marked the beginning of the five-day Diwali this year. The body of Shakespeare's texts became the unlikely site where religions and cultures converge to form a patchwork. And that is a beautiful, beautiful patchwork here. The, it shows us how literature, how literature allows us to rehearse different scenarios without having to endure the costly consequences of going to war or taking one's own life in a political prison. Literature shows us the future of the history that we can make. So we can live both in the present and the future. Hamlet's existentialist question also informed a group of Afghan actors' decision to perform Comedy of Errors in Dari Persian at the Globe Theatre in London. The director, Miss Corinne Jabber, finds the play highly relevant to Afghanistan. 
with a father looking for lost family after decades of war. Now, the situation was obviously quite difficult. Uh, the Roy Isab company, they actually had to rehearse their production in Delhi after having narrowly escaped Taliban attack on a British council building in Kabul where they were rehearsed. But the success story was very moving. In the end, they made it to London. Men and women held hands on stage, as you can see here, and women uh, appeared without headscarves in several scenes. But for that, they were harassed. Even those who merely auditioned received death threats. In the end, just to be able to change the image of Afghanistan abroad was priceless for the actors, despite all the challenges. And the play helped them find shelter from harsh Afghan politics. Literature here shows us a future through even impossible situations. We are defined by, story, by our stories, but in our age of globalization, discovering other people's stories liberates us from the prison house of our ephemeral life. Thank you.